everyone, and welcome to The Vintage Company. As we approach the last few weeks of summer, it seems only fair that we talk about a quintessential warm weather treat, Magic Shell. Magic Shell is a dessert topping that hardens into a shell when it touches ice cream. Advertisements describe the topping as like magic, hence the name Magic Shell. But where did the idea for Magic Shell come from? And how does it work? This is the story of Magic Shell. In 1977, three inventors from the Californian company Patent Technology Inc. filed for a patent on a quote, topping for frozen desserts and a method of manufacture. The topping described in the patent would be, quote, normally in a liquid form, which immediately hardens to form a brittle edible shell when applied to a frozen dessert, such as ice cream. Now there's a perfectly scientific reason for how the topping could go from a liquid to a solid, which I'll get to later on. But when pharmaceutical and dairy company Foremost McKesson scooped up this invention to sell in stores, it was perhaps easier to describe the novel process simply as magic. And so in the late 1970s, Foremost debuted Magic Shell, a flavored ice cream topping that could harden into a candy-like shell in seconds. Advertisements told consumers that the shell was, quote, crackling good. Now, having a hard shell ice cream topping was not a new concept. It was already available in fast food restaurants like Dairy Queen. But to make a hard shell, fast food restaurants had to keep a vat of specially formulated topping heated to 95 degrees. The topping would harden and dry a few seconds after touching cold ice cream. With Magic Shell, the topping was intended to be kept at room temperature, no heating required. For the first time, according to Foremost, consumers could have that very same hard shell ice cream topping, previously exclusive to fast food restaurants, in their very own kitchens. And they could have it in flavors chocolate, peanut butter, chocolate fudge, butterscotch, and mint. However, despite its promises to create a crackly coating, consumer test panels struggled to get Magic Shell to work as advertised. As one tester noted, I tried three kinds, butterscotch, chocolate, and peanut butter, and no way did they turn hard. So I thought to myself, maybe the ice cream isn't cold enough. Would you believe I went and I took some ice cubes out of the freezer, and the stuff just ran all over the ice cube? Another tester stated, No matter what the label says, the hardening is not an instantaneous process. You have to give it much more time than just seconds. And then there was the matter of Magic Shell's price tag. The price is outrageous. Hershey's syrup is 49 cents. You can make much better sauce cheaper at home. But despite its critics, Magic Shell had a profound effect on the market. Prepared toppings saw record sales in 1980 and 1981, which industry experts credited to Magic Shell. With its unique concept and intensive advertising, Magic Shell had drawn consumer attention to the prepared topping section of the grocery store. It also expanded the entire toppings category, with competitors eager to capitalize on the increased attention Magic Shell had created. And among these competitors was J.M. Smucker, who specialized in butters, spreads, and toppings for bread, ice cream, and more. In 1981, Smucker introduced their own version of Magic Shell, which was dubbed Brittle Top. But Brittle Top struggled to catch up with Magic Shell, who had the head start in terms of both timing and marketing. And as they say, if you can't beat them, join them, or force them to join you by buying them. Which is exactly what J.M. Smucker did. In 1982, they purchased the Magic Shell brand from Foremost McKesson. Magic Shell became part of Smucker's line of 11 ice cream toppings, which accounted for 35% of the market. As Smucker's executive noted, As a leader in the topping category, Magic Shell is a natural fit for us. In 1983, Smuckers reintroduced the Magic Shell brand with ads that described it as the topping made of real chocolate that hardens like magic. So what exactly was the magic behind Magic Shell? Now prior to Magic Shell, ice cream toppings and syrups for use at home were liquids. They might become more viscous when they came in contact with cold ice cream, but they wouldn't completely solidify. These toppings were made of sugar syrup and flavorings like chocolate or fruits. They were higher in moisture and lower in fats or oils. Magic Shell was the opposite. It had a lower moisture level and a higher oil or fat content, about 44 to 53%. According to Magic Shell's patent, it was preferable for the high fat content to be comprised of a blend of vegetable oils, one of which may be partially hydronated and another being refined coconut oil. 
And if you look at a bottle of chocolate magic shell today, its first three ingredients are sugar, sunflower oil, and coconut oil. At room temperature, sugar and coconut oil are solid, and sunflower oil is liquid. This combination allows magic shell to be pourable. But sunflower oil has a freezing point of about 1.4 degrees Fahrenheit, close to the temperature of a typical freezer. So when sunflower oil and coconut oil touch ice cream from the freezer, they harden. The colder the ice cream, the faster they freeze. And while this process may have been described as, quote, like magic, magic shell works because temperature changes it from one state of matter to another. When Magic Shell was acquired by J.M. Smucker in 1982, Smucker's held the number one spot in the toppings market. In second place was Kraft, who had eight flavors of ice cream toppings. But by the 1990s, another competitor knocked both Smucker's and Kraft out of the top spot, Hershey Foods. Hershey Foods had been making a chocolate syrup product since 1926. In 1990, Hershey introduced a line of chocolate shop toppings for ice cream which it followed six years later with its very own hard shell topping, which it called, perhaps less imaginatively than Foremost or Smucker's, Shell Topping. And while Magic Shell had the benefit of being the first to market, Hershey had the advantage of being able to draw from its popular line of candy brands. Hershey started with chocolate and Reese's Shell Topping varieties before adding crackle and cookies and cream flavors, made with crisp rice and white chocolate sauce with cookie bits, respectively. By 1997, Hershey had become the leader of the 215 million chocolate syrup and dessert topping category with a nearly 55% share. J.M. Smucker was pushed into second place, but held on to a leading share for shell toppings because of Magic Shell. As Hershey attempted to overtake Smucker's, Smucker's countered by targeting a younger consumer base with a kid-oriented cartoon turtle mascot. Smucker's also began adding new Magic Shell flavors. At first, these flavors were fairly conventional, like cookie dough, caramel, and Twix. But by the late 2000s and early 2010s, Magic Shell was available in more unusual flavors like orange cream, rainbow sherbet, root beer, and pink lemonade. All told, Magic Shell has had 30 different flavors over the years, with unicorn, a white cupcake flavor with specks of blue, pink, and purple, being the most recent addition to the line. So which is better, Magic Shell or Shell Topping? First, a note of disclosure, I am a historian, I am not a food scientist, and I am making evaluations about which product works better based on my own experiments and perceptions. And with that out of the way, let's test Magic Shell and Shell Topping out. First, let's talk about which product is easier to use. Both Magic Shell and Shell Topping are made with similar ingredients, with sugar and coconut oil in the first three ingredients listed. The Magic Shell is made with sunflower oil, and Shell Topping is made with palm oil. Because of the oils, both Magic Shell and Shell Topping need to be held upside down and shaken thoroughly before using. Magic Shell's instructions recommend 20 seconds of shaking, and Shell Topping recommends 30 seconds. Shaking the bottle before use is important for both products to ensure any oil that may have separated from the other ingredients gets mixed back in. Otherwise, you might end up with clumpy topping or just oil by itself. Most times when I followed the instructions, Magic Shell and Shell Topping worked as intended. A thin layer of chocolate topping poured from the bottle. But I did have one test where Shell Topping came out with clumps of what was possibly palm or coconut oil even after shaking upside down for 30 seconds. So ease of use goes to Magic Shell. In terms of coverage, both products performed well, but Magic Shell flowed across the ice cream more easily and covered more of the surface overall. And this may have to do with the next test, which is freezing times. Now, this isn't a perfect test because you can see I somehow managed to pour more Magic Shell than Shell Topping, but they are pretty similar in terms of coverage and thickness. And almost immediately, you can see parts of the chocolate going from shiny to dull as it begins to harden. But interestingly enough, neither Magic Shell nor Shell Topping completely solidified in just seconds. In fact, it took over a minute for both chocolate toppings to form a shell, especially in areas where the topping was thicker and had less direct contact with the cold surface of the ice cream. In this test, Shell Topping froze faster than Magic Shell. Now I tried again using less topping for both brands, and they both froze faster, but Magic Shell still took longer to freeze than Shell Topping. 
This might be because shell topping uses palm oil instead of sunflower oil. Palm oil is solid at much higher temperatures than sunflower oil. It's actually also solid at temperatures higher than coconut oil. This may account for shell topping's ability to freeze faster than magic shell. It may also be why magic shell seems to have better coverage, because the sunflower oil might stay liquid longer and can spread further across the ice cream before solidifying. So depending on how much of either topping you use and the temperature of the ice cream, it seems like it takes more than just seconds for either magic shell or shell topping to completely freeze. But this round goes to shell topping. Now which topping has the more crackling shell? Magic shell seems a little softer and was harder to crack. It sometimes took multiple hits with a spoon to break the shell into pieces. You can see some sections where the spoon left an imprint on the shell but didn't actually crack the surface. The shell topping on the other hand broke apart more easily and had a more satisfying crunchy feeling. I would give this round to shell topping. And lastly, taste. I personally preferred the taste of magic shell over shell topping. To me, magic shell tasted closer to a chocolate dipped cone from Dairy Queen. Shell topping wasn't bad, but it had a stronger flavor that felt like it overpowered the vanilla ice cream. Magic Shell seemed like it was a better complement to the ice cream. Now, of course, you could choose neither Magic Shell nor Shell Topping. There are countless recipes out there that show you how to make a shell-like topping yourself using chocolate and coconut oil. Regardless of what you use, Shell Toppings are a fun and seemingly magical way to add something a little extra to your ice cream sundae unless you want to put a cherry on top. Thank you for watching. This video was a lot of fun to make. It was especially satisfying to film all the b-roll of the toppings freezing and then speed the video up afterwards. If you liked this video and would like to see more about the history of products, brands, and companies, please consider giving this video a like and subscribing below. Thank you again and I'll see you next time.